And welcome to episode 106 of the Techno Buffalo Show. I'm one of your two hosts for today, Sean Ani, Director of Operations. I'm joined by Executive Editor Todd Hazelton. Hey, everybody. How are you doing in this fine Thanksgiving week? I'm good. That's why I've got the fire going in celebration of it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's our it's a holiday f- podcast for people who can't see. It's a fireside chat with Todd Hazelton. And, yeah. and I'm not quite sure what your television is showing up there on the mantle. Uh, uh, Miles Davis on Chromecast, I think. So probably, yeah. Oh, okay. Miles Davis <laughs> what? No Christmas music? Oh, not okay. yet. Not till oh, after okay. Thanksgiving for me, which I know you know. So uh, I've fun. already been playing Christmas music. I know a lot of my friends have too, and my neighbors have all the lights up and all that. Which, by the way, I know this is kind of a uh, a quick tangent, which we're known for, I guess now. But there, I saw these Christmas lights with little speakers every so often, like Bluetooth speakers. So, like, you can hang the lights around your room and then play Christmas music through the lights. <laughs> That's not really so much of a, a tangent when one of our topics today is smart home, and that That's is right. definitely that that is smart definitely taking uh, yeah that that's taking things a little far, I think. But um, <laughs> cool idea, though. Sure, uh, you know, there, there's times where you know just because you can do a thing doesn't, doesn't mean, you mean you should do a thing. <laughs> But anyway, so folks, if you have any questions for us, you can ask in the YouTube live chat, and you can also tweet us at TB Show Podcast, which I see we already have a question there, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So please feel free to send in your questions. But yes, so one of the topics we wanted to touch on this week was smart homes. And uh, Todd, I think you and I are both you uh, doing a little bit of smart homing up as of late. Yeah. And, uh, I know you uh, have written a post that uh, I don't know when it's going up, but you're you're writing a post about doing a smart home on a budget. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it'll probably run you know, sometime either during this Thanksgiving weekend or during the holidays. But it's how to create a smart home for under five hundred dollars. You know, so it's not going to have like appliances and things that are going to be crazy expensive, but it does like get you started. And I talk about. Um, picking a hub first, and I kind of went with the voice assistant hubs like Amazon Echo or um, Google Home, or I even said Apple TV because if you have an Apple TV and you leave it on like fourth generation, you leave it on or an iPad, um, it it sort of does serve as your smart home hub uh, so you can like control your lights and stuff when you leave the house. And I went through light bulbs, so I said, you know, like pick a set of lights and the crazy thing is, you know, once upon a time, the Philips Hue light bulb pack, like the one with uh, um, all kinds of colors, like lines of colors or whatever, there's a three pack and it was like, it's actually, it's still 200 bucks and that's the one I recommend you get. But they sell white bulbs for like 13 bucks each now. And as long as you have the starter hub, um, which you can get in a starter kit for like 65 bucks with two white bulbs, uh, then you can just keep adding on until you have like a hundred bulbs. So that's a great way to get started, you know, just buy like the cheaper, just only white bulb kit. And then if you want the colors later, you know, you can get them later. Um, And I also mentioned LifeX, which is the other brand you can use and you don't need a hub for those. So like for the, I I break it down and and there's a budget category where, um, you know, it's like how to do this, you know, for cheaper. And I say like get three LifeX bulbs because then you, you can get, you know, you put one in each room and then you've got lights that you can control throughout your house you know, maybe it's not every light in each room, but it's a start. So you can have three rooms for 75 bucks if you buy the entry-level LifeX for 25 a pop. My only problem with the smart bulbs, I, I like really bright lighting. You know, it, as I'm getting older, I, you know, I, I, I need to see things. <laughs> and nobody so far is making a smart bulb. Like, I use mostly like 100-watt LEDs now. Oh, okay. And yeah, everyone's at 60-watt equivalents on the smart homes and for most people that'll be fine as you get older and your eyes are getting worse uh and you want more light you know i'm sure those (laughs) light bulbs are coming down the road though at some point yeah i'd have to look i mean the nice thing about the white bulbs too and all of them actually is like you can change the spectrum so like if you want a cool light you know for concentration you can set it to that or a warmer light for like you know relaxing and reading you can change it so that's just the kind of a bonus to these white lights but um and as opposed to like a regular led where you you get one you know number rating one kind of hue i mean how how often do you actually use the color change though that's just something i i can't ever picture myself really doing i use it all the time um for my white lights i use it 
like especially if I'm reading, I put it on like a yellower color. And um, in one of my rooms where I have a TV, I usually put it on like a purpley or a blue or something really dim when I'm watching a movie. It's kind of like a movie theater effect, um, which I actually like. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, and then I, mean, I have a buddy who does them. He uses them, uh, you know, red and green for his Christmas parties and stuff like that. You can have them flash or do whatever you want. So, right, right. I, just, I, I guess I'm just too old school. Again, it's one of those older things where I'm just like, yeah, you know, yeah. like Brazen Franco just said in the uh, chat. Uh, never understand, never understood the appeal in ambient lighting. I'm with you. Either have the lights uh, on or yeah. off. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I kind of like the ambient lighting in my in my TV room. It's kind of or like if I'm playing video games or something. I don't know. It's like nice effect. Um, yeah. But anyway, so those are light bulbs, and then I added in um, you know, other things you can do. So like I said, you know, get some eyes, and that was uh you know buying like a drop cam, um, or the more affordable option I said was the Logitech Circle, which works pretty well. It's 130 bucks. Um, and then you know, so for the most part, then you've got. Something that can control music and answer questions, you know, with your hub, whether it's Siri, uh, Alexa, or Google Assistant. And then you can control your lights, and then you can, uh, you know, watch your house, all of this remotely, too. And then I said, like, if you want to add on, you can do all of that for, like, 440 bucks or something like that. And then if I said, if you want to add on, you can start doing, like, smart locks. But those are a little expensive, or Bluetooth, um, quick key. Has a uh, the one that's rec most recommended by Wirecutter, which is a good source. And then um, there's another one called August, which is a good one. And those are about 200 bucks per door. So that, that kind of goes out of that $500 budget. Yeah. Um, and then we were talking this morning about just individual outlets. So like if you wanted to do like a Christmas tree, you were saying, or like a coffee maker or something, you can right. buy these products, um, you know, Belkin, D-Link, they all make them, but you use TPL Link. Right. Um, and just, just real quickly, folks, the, TP link, sorry. the, the reason I, I, I did up a Christmas tree was um, it was my parents' Christmas tree and, and they're both getting older. It, it's getting tougher for them to walk and so on, you know, and so I was able to plug all their Christmas lighting in through one outlet using a, a power strip. And now they can just talk to their echo and say, you know, her name tree on their Christmas tree goes on. Yes. It's a little thing, but I, you know, as I've said on this show before, I think smart homes, you know, a lot of people have looked at them as a luxury. I'm looking at them from the perspective of, I have a father who's about to turn 70. My mother is 69. You know, they're getting up there in the years. They both have health issues. Mm -hmm. Smart home stuff makes their lives a little bit easier. And as, right. as the homes get even smarter, it's going to make their lives that much easier. But uh, we had a, a question on Twitter from Kishan. Most smart home products use internet connection, right? What if there's no electricity? That's why I still have a little bit of a problem with like the door locks. Although I know that they also have the optional key, but you know, people are going to get in the habit of, Oh, I've got a smart door lock. I don't need to take my key with me. And they're going to end up locked out of the house because, Oh, I have a smart lock. I didn't need to take my key with me. Yeah. I don't think smart locks. I think those are battery powered. I'm not hundred percent sure. I know some of them do have battery backups. So some of them do. I don't think all do, but that's just, I'm trying right now in my personal smart home setting up, I'm not trying to do anything that is life essential. Mm. So like, yeah, I, I've gotten rid of phone lines and gotten Uma, which, you know, I lose power. Then I can't use my phone. Well, the, I have a cell phone. I go outside, you right. know, or my, you know, one of our cars has a built-in, you know, OnStar phone. I go out there, I make a phone call. So I was willing to give up a, a regular landline in that situation. But even today, even if you're not doing smart home stuff, you lose power, you're going to lose a lot of, of usability anyway. You know, you're, you're not going to be able to run lamps. You're not going to be able to do, you know, television or whatever. So anything that's not life essential Changes yeah, so it makes the life a little easier. Yeah, like what's the difference? I mean, you lose power, you lose your lights. I mean, right. No, exactly. I, I don't understand. But no, I guess I, I, I can understand. I mean, like let, let's like say I'm not I plugging was, in like life support for myself. <laughs> that's what I was just gonna say. <laughs> if it's a life support device, I'm gonna go as old cool as possible, even if it's a hand crank. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> 
<laughs> you know, but yeah, I mean, most things you lose the ability to use them anyway if you lose power. So, yeah, and if like the internet stops working or whatever, you know, then you just use a light switch. I mean, everything still works. You're not replacing. Like, I didn't get rid of light switches in my house. Right. I just added the ability to control my voice or my phone. I mean, everything still works the other way around. Um, yeah. If you turn the light off with a light switch, then it's not accessible because the bulb doesn't have power uh, through the socket. But otherwise, you know, yeah, everything's traditional. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, th- this takes us a little bit into uh, the one of the other topics we wanted to touch on, which was Black Friday. So, of course, for those that aren't familiar with Black Friday, although it seems to be in every country now, even though it's not connected to a, a holiday. Uh, Black Friday is coming up this Friday in the U.S. That's the first day after Thanksgiving. Huge sales. There, you know, I've looked at some of the Black Friday lists. I'm not sure there is a category that doesn't have something on sale this Friday. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, televisions, computers movies uh, even digital goods are going to be discounted it's crazy so i mean it, if you wanted to do smart home i bet you you could find some discounted stuff this friday yeah i mean well one thing that's going to be discounted for sure is uh well two things the echo and the uh google home is as yeah. of tomorrow hundred dollars instead of 130 which is a pretty good deal yeah so i mean if you want to get started on smart home you know, th- this is the best time of year to do it. And even if it's just going out and getting the Echo or the Google Home, whichever one you want, you know, that's going to be a-, a great start to your system. Now, like you say in your article, Todd, I agree with you. Right now, for me, it's the Echo is the way to go because it does, it- it's got such a head start right now. Yeah, it's got all the, uh, like, the add-ons. And Google will get there, but yes. right now. Yeah, yeah I-, I have zero doubt that Google will get there. But if you want, to hit the ground running echoes the way to go right now Mm -hmm. for sure. But yeah, so black Friday is, um, I, the one thing I always say about black Friday is just make sure you do your research. There are, there are so many hidden caveats in black Friday because like they'll you say, you know, Oh, look at this, you know, massive 70 inch television is going to be down to $800. Take a look at what its refresh rate is. Take a look if it has all the features of a normal model because they will produce special models just for Black Friday. Yep. And so you can get sucked in real easy and you're not getting half of what you think you're getting. Mm-hmm. You know, and when I, for those that aren't familiar with refresh rates, there are three refresh rates on television 60 hertz, 120 hertz, and 240 hertz. The faster the ref, the higher the refresh rate, the better the picture quality is, especially if something's fast moving, especially in sports. So if something is a 60 hertz refresh rate, you don't want it for sports because on a 70-inch television, all you're going to see is blurry people yeah, running around. Uh, 4K. That's the thing, too. Like a lot of them I was going through this morning, a lot of them are 60 hertz, the 4K TVs. You know, and they're like 400 bucks, and that's why. So like, yeah. if you don't care about that and you're not watching live sports, then it's, you know, or like action movies, I guess, with a lot of – um then it's probably not a big deal but for me like i don't know i feel like if you're trying to buy a tv you know it's something you're leaving around for i'm like that it's probably like almost the best that you can get for the price range you're looking um because you're gonna have it for a while yeah and it's it's just like any other time of year you should always do your research before you make any large purchase Mm -hmm. but on black friday especially there are a lot of hidden traps in these black friday deals so Make sure you read up on the, the product that you're looking at. And also make sure, you know, just see if somebody's got it online instead of having to go fight those stupid crowds. Yeah, I was going to say, just check, you know, look elsewhere too. Um, one of the things like Apple's going to have a sale. They actually just said to, um, today. And last year they didn't have anything for Black Friday. And the year prior they were just doing like $50 gift cards with purchases. But so like if you're going to Apple's site and you're looking for something and maybe like what you see isn't there, go to Best Buy or Walmart or Target. They always discount Apple products. Um, You know, a lot of them this year have the iPad 2 um, and some of the earlier iPhones, but you'll probably see iPhone 7s discounted across all three. Yep. Okay. Let let me, just to be clear, did you mean iPad Air 2? 
Yeah, iPad Air 2. I'm okay, because if it was an <laughs> iPad 2. You can still buy an iPad 2. Um, <laughs> there was an iPad Mini 2, though, that was uh, 200 bucks. I think that's at Walmart. Then the other thing I was going to say is if you have any sort of elite – um, membership with like Best Buy, which is usually free to sign up for. You know, consider signing up for that now because they have early access um, on some of those sites. So like Best Buy has their membership deals right now that you can take advantage of. Um, some of them are not great. They're like that 4K TV I was talking about, 60 hertz refresh rate. But others, you know, if you just need like a basic or something like that, there's some pretty good savings already. Yeah, exactly. Just do your research, folks. I mean, I, I know it's really super alluring when you see some of these prices. And in years past, I've fallen for some of them. It's been years since I went and did a Black Friday. I'm usually in the UK on Black Friday now. But it's, which they have Black Friday sales as well, which just makes me chuckle. Because, okay, so you're having a sale that we do the day after we celebrate leaving here. <laughs> okay, that, that, that adds up. Okay, uh, <laughs> makes makes total sense as you walk around town and you see all the Black Friday signs in the cell phone stores. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, just make sure you do your research. You know, we've had we've put out uh, one list already about you know sites that you can go and find the best Black Friday listings. Uh, there will be a post coming out on Thanksgiving Day about the best apps to take with you if you're going out shopping. So just make sure that you're doing your research, plan accordingly, and really just shop online anymore. It, it's it's yeah. wel welcome to 2016. Why why anyone goes out of their house anymore is amazing to me. Uh, <laughs> go to Amazon. I mean, one of the things I, I have a guide coming up how to get the best deals on Amazon, and some of it's like use your phone as opposed to your computer. You know, like um, that that's a trick that I've used for everything from like iPhone launches to Bruce Springsteen tickets. Like a lot of times people, you know, are loading the website where the app doesn't have as much load. So like there's fewer people on it. You can get the page up and order it. Um, another recommendation has like, make sure one click ordering is on so you can get it real quick. You know, if it's just like a, those flash sales that Amazon does, you know, like if you're not there right then you're not getting it. Yeah. If you have an echo, you can ask, uh, what the daily deals are between now and I think Cyber Monday. I, I've done that. That is the most annoying way of shopping invented. It, yeah, it can be because <laughs> it's so funny you said that. Yesterday, um, I was talking about it with my brother and I said, oh yeah, you can do like, or maybe it was over the weekend. And I was like, you can uh, you can ask, you know, I don't want to say it because she's right behind me. Yeah. You, can, you can ask the Echo voice assistant what the deals are. And he's like, oh, that's awesome. And she starts spouting him off. And then he goes, so do they change? And I said, yes. And when I said yes, it was the same time she asked me about the confirmation. And I had ordered it. it and it turned out to be like some leather oil or something. Like, and So I, I went online and had to cancel it. But yeah, I can see what you mean. It's kind of annoying. And like, she's oh. slow to like say that. Oh, that's just, that, that is... He was like, Man, I think I just ordered it. And I was like, what? <laughs> that was a fantastic object lesson right there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, so you weren't in need of any it. leather oil? No. I mean, I guess I have a leather bag, but like, no, I don't need, I don't need. I was leather. thinking more along the lines <laughs> of your chaps, but you know. <laughs> yeah, right. For, for your evening job as a male stripper, but yes, uh, that, that's a great example. But yeah, every time I've, asked her to bring up the deals. I'm just like, by the second deal, I'm just like, stop. I'm not going to sit here and listen to this. Yeah. It's, so maybe there's some great deals in there. I don't know because I never get through all of them. Yeah. Well, it started off like um, the opening day. Ever, it was like last week, I think. They had um, like the Amazon, what is it, the Echo Tap? What's the one that like nobody buys? <laughs> the one that like you have to hold the button to get. Yeah. No, it's she who shall not be named because I don't want her to go off in the room. But yeah, anyway, it was that one was on sale, which, you know, is a pretty good deal. So like there are some products worth getting, but otherwise. I, I've i actually avoided telling my, my father about the existence of the tap because he keeps going, you know what would be awesome is if I could have her in my car. I'm just like, oh no. There you we're, go. we're not doing that. <laughs> and we're like create a hot, 
hot spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not creating this monster. But <laughs> right. Uh so dad, uh you went through 83 gigabytes of data this month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's not happening. And so the final topic we wanted to touch on this week was, uh, as I believe I mentioned on the previous episode, that my iPhone 6 Plus battery was not doing so hot. So I went ahead, I got, ordered an iPhone 7 Plus. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I skipped the 6S. So this is my first time dealing with Force Touch. And of course, like everyone, this is their first time dealing with you know the 3.5 millimeter adapter dongle. Oh, yeah. I am not a fan of either. <laughs> Force Touch has made it like a minefield trying to open anything. Yeah, it can be annoying. Yeah, because like the other day, I, I was outside, it was dark, I needed my flashlight, turned on the flashlight with no problem. Turning off the flashlight must have taken six, seven taps because it, really? kept, it, it kept enlarging the icon and kept, and I was just like, I just want to turn off the flashlight. That's all <laughs> I want to do. Oh man. Is there you sensitivities? Know, I I, I've is. looked around and I haven't found a sensitivity. There is for like the home button, but that's different. Yeah. So, you know, and the th I, I, you know, I'm not paying attention. I hold something too long. Oh no, I don't want to open a new document. I just wanted the app to open. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. I guess yeah. it does take some getting used to. Yeah, when you're like, you know, brings up the other options. Yeah, and it's a lot harder now to when you want to move icons yes, around. That's true. You have to do like a soft long hold. <laughs> Instead I should, of like in the past, you know, you just kind of hit hard and like hold it. Yeah. I shouldn't have to think this much about the way I tap. That's true. <laughs> it's weird. Oh. I mean, but even the Pixel now has um, it's not force touch, but it's you know like a long touch. I suppose it's a little better, but it brings up, you know, additional options on things, but you don't get like that feedback or like the, I don't know. I, I'm kind of with you on that headphone jack though. Uh, when I was just out in Irvine, I was on a flight and I know I've said a lot like, oh, it doesn't matter. And yeah, <laughs> the dongle. Well, I was on a flight and I had to put my bags above me, right? Um, because I think I was in a, you know, the seat where you don't have one in front of you and you don't have an option. So yeah. anyway. And I was sitting there with my Bluetooth headphones, and I forgot to charge them fully. So, like, flight, um, they die, and it's really turbulent. Um, my flight out there was crazy turbulent for some reason. Like, so we weren't supposed to get up, and so I definitely wasn't getting up and opening, a, you know, something where the bags could fall. And like, I'm looking through for another set of headphones, so I had to sit there without headphones. And then eventually, I just used the air, airplane ones, you know, that they give you, and plug it in with a double jack. And I'm sitting there, wa you know, watching a movie with the crappy audio. But like, had it like that wasn't a problem previously, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I am lucky. I, I wear, most things I wear in life have tons of pockets on them. This particular jacket has this tiny little pocket on the arm that I was like, who would ever use this? <laughs> now it is, the, it's it a dongle is the perfect dongle pocket. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's something I hadn't even thought about, though. Like, I, I guess, you know, and I wasn't. I went on the flight and was just like, Oh, you know, it didn't even cross my mind until you need it, you know. And you're like, ah, oh, man. Like, I didn't have – I had to go up there and either get the dongle or I was going to get, like, a battery pack and charge the headphones. They were like, I don't know. Yeah. I guess I, I had my Pixel with me, but then I would have had to, go, you know, take the other headphones out of the bag. It was just a real pain. No, I totally get that. But, I mean, th this thing – if you lose this thing, nine ninety five. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. And the other thing is, I, I always, I have enough Apple charging stuff and all that now that when I get a new phone, I don't take any of the accessories out because that way when I resell it, pristine, good to go. So at some point, I'm going to have to buy another one of these things. Right. So I have a clean one in the box for whenever I go to sell the, the 7 Plus some year down the road. But I just, oh. I the force touch. I'm sure I'll eventually get used to it, but it's it's maddening in that first day or two. Yeah, it, it, I I can see that. Did you get um, did you have a hard time finding the plus? In the it storage? took me the first day. All I could find was a rose gold one, and 
then the, by the next day when I was like, okay, no matter what today, I've got to order one. So I, I would have it before my trip. Mm-hmm. The next day, the rose gold one I had located sold, which mm-hmm. meant somebody was desperate. And <laughs> that's funny because that's actually the first one I ordered and then I found another one. And then all of a sudden T-Mobile site updated and they got a fresh shipment in and I was all able right. to get in real fast and get one. But uh, yeah, I, I could find regular iPhone sevens all day long and the seven pluses were really difficult. Yeah, that's crazy. And I'm guessing not the 32, the 30, oh, did, 64. What I forget what the capacity. No, it starts. It goes one. It goes 32, 128, 256. Okay, I got a 128. Right. Yeah, because I'm guessing there's probably 32s that are probably not hard to find. It, it depends. Well, actually, no. The 256s were the easiest to find. Really? Huh, I found a lot of 256s. <laughs> huh. Yeah, but I was just. I don't need 256 gigs. You yeah. know. It, and plus, it's yet another hundred dollars on top of the one twenty eight. But um, yeah, no, two fifty six was actually the most common one to find. Wow. That's yeah, I, it's the price. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, steep. Yeah, there, there's only so many people that you know a need that much storage, b can afford that mm-hmm. phone. But I, the one twenty eight was more than I wanted to spend. But I also knew thirty two wasn't going to cut it. Yeah, 32 is kind of, I mean, it's 32 not as bad is the as 16, new 16, obviously. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't know. I can't. I have the 32 gigabyte Pixel XL, and honestly, it's been fine. But I, I worry, like, you know, if I'm going to download a movie or something like that or, like, games for a flight, I just don't do it on this phone, I do it on the iPhone. Um, I think once the 128 pixels are easier to find, I'll probably end up picking one of those up. But, uh, you know, they're still sold out for weeks and weeks. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing to me in this day and age that there still are shortages in phones. Mm. You know, you would think all these companies would have a pretty good idea of how many they're going to sell. Of course, I mean, we're also in, living in a world where you can't find an NES Classic to save your life at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that was almost by design. I mean, I don't know. We'd have to ask Joey. Well, but like, it's certainly making headlines that you can't find it. Now, here's what's funny is that Normally, whenever Joey's had a problem finding a gaming thing, I've just been able to run to my Walmart and get it. And one time I drove 30 miles down the road to uh, Macon, Missouri, which is a little podunk town. They're, they don't even have a 24-hour Walmart. It opens at 7 a.m. <laughs> and it was, uh, I believe it was the Wii U. We needed a couple. And I called Macon, and at 7 a.m., they said they had them. I had them hold them. You know, I drove 30 miles down the road to get them was able to get as many as I wanted. NES Classic, I went to my local Walmart and they, when something's brought out to the floor, they're supposed to generate a tag. Mm-hmm. So according to them, they had six of them because the tag had never been generated. After an hour of hunting, they could not find those six NES Classics. So all we could figure out was at 12.01 a.m. on release day, somebody bought all six. Oh, wow. So <laughs> then I immediately called Macon and they were like, oh, no, we were sold out at 702. Wow. I was like, okay, <laughs> this thing truly is in demand. Yeah, and I was hunting around Irvine, California, um, you know, well, there, but there were a lot of Targets and a lot of Walmarts and stuff like that, or a lot of Targets at least. So we were driving around yeah, to those, and um, yeah, and there was a line at every store, like people had already bought them. Um, some stores had like as many as 55 in stock, which is kind of impressive, I guess. And they were all, you know, just spoken for the second we got there. We were there early. I, I think people just went nuts for this, truly. Yeah. You know, and I, I will get one eventually. And actually, Joey and I are talking about importing the Japanese super fan, or, you know, the uh, Famicom oh, yeah. classics. <laughs> yeah. Because they have different games. Right. You know, there's a sumo game. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, for, uh, I'll pay an upcharge, you know, because it's importing, but it's still going to be 30 Japanese games. You know, why not? But, right. you know, it's, um, although th- that two and a half foot cable, I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> I know. That's the funniest thing. And, you know, well, I guess it's kind of like, did Apple create it, you know, because you got to buy something else to make it longer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Apple move. Yeah. I, but, 
I don't know, but can't yeah, you, can't you, isn't there like a Bluetooth option too? Like if you added, I, I think so. I think so. I don't know. Maybe I'm making that. But up. I don't know. It's just, it's that, that's the other thing. Like you could always do, you know, an emulator on your computer or something. Not that I. <laughs> I I haven't. If you uh, get legal ROMs. <laughs> I, I just looked over and apparently while we were discussing the dongle, Brazen Franco commented, but Sean, courage. Yeah, this courage. is not dongle how I... Pockets. For those of you listening on the audio show, you can't see I'm holding up the, the dongle. Uh, this is not how I define courage. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry, but this flimsy little thing is not how I define courage. Th this thing is going to break... You know what's what's funny? Yeah, it probably will break. There's a there was talk today from um, well in a podcast yesterday from two Apple pundits, uh, John Gruber and Jason Snell, and they were saying that word floating around Apple's campus is that Ive is kind of only working on campus too and like retail stores and hasn't been doing very much product stuff. Which makes you wonder, like, is that is that why we're, you know, would he have made these decisions? I guess he approved them on some level, like he's the design chief. But it had me wondering, like, maybe that's why the iPhone design didn't really change, you know, since the 6 and stuff. Well, and, and he also was uh, telling J.J. Abrams that there should be a spitty lightsaber. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, they were saying they suggested that Ive's idea was like the gold Apple Watch, you know, like the Apple Watch edition, like these expensive products, which makes sense because I also wrote he had um, that table for uh, Red, um, the foundation that gives to mm -hmm. AIDS, and they uh, Sotheby sold this aluminum table for like one point six million dollars. I mean, so it seems like maybe he wants to just create these like very special products like Apple Watch and gold and like exclusive things and then you know spend his time on the Apple campus and stuff. I mean it's, it's just speculation I think and some hearsay but Oh the other problem I'm having with the iPhone 7 it's not talking to my Pebble well. Oh it that's keeps, weird. Keeps losing connection. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to figure that out. That's but uh, weird. Wow we've talked longer than I thought so let's jump into the questions here and see what is all on all your minds this week uh relax like a cat it'd be great if apple released a 17 inch laptop the 17 inch model was the only version that also served as a shield as a 17 inch yeah, macbook pro yeah. user who it still sits on my nightstand and is usable uh i miss the 17 inch model like crazy mm -hmm. um but again sean sized hands uh so <laughs> I can't go bigger than 13 anymore these days. Like I look at 15 inch laptops and like that thing's huge. I, I know, I know, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm on a 15 inch MacBook Pro. I anytime I use a 13 inch laptop, I'm just like, what? What? <laughs> but it, the, for those that don't know the joke about Sean Hands, there there actually was a time jokingly where we were thinking about launching a a photo gallery series on Techno Buffalo of phones in Sean's hand <laughs> because huge phones look like normal sized phones in my hands. It's so we, we were going to start, you know, like all the, when phablets started, you know, like here's the note in Sean's hand <laughs> where it looks like a normal sized phone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I have giant hands. I can't help it. Mm -hmm. uh, from Brazen Franco, what is so great about the NES classic when you can get stuff like, the Restando, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not getting that word there, uh, who even has an OS for the big screen with Retro Pi, even has NES or NES controllers. Uh, Nintendo's name is on this. That's pretty much it. I mean, so you, it's like a miniature version of a throwback. I think it's all nostalgia based, right? Like, it, <laughs> it's, it's the fact that it looks exactly like the old NES, it's made by Nintendo itself. While I understand everything you said in there, Brazen, walk up to anyone in a gaming, well, not anyone, but 95% of the people in a gaming aisle and go, yeah, you know, you could get this and it's running retro pie and all, and they'll look at you and think that you might be, you know, imbibing something that you shouldn't be. Uh, so <laughs> it, it's just a matter of this is a prepackaged, plug it in, it works. Parents can buy it for their kids. People scalpers can go out there and buy a ton of them, throw them up on eBay <laughs> to sell to parents to buy for their kids for exorbitant prices. 
it, it's yes, your solution is fantastic. Yeah, I was gonna say like on Windows Ten or whatever, even Mac, you know, you can get plenty of emulators and any controller, you know, on the Windows use a Xbox One controller. Yeah. One S with Bluetooth, but you know, uh, I think yeah, like you're saying, it's it's all nostalgia. And uh, in reference to the infamous dongle from Relax Like a Cat, is the adapter made of unapologetic plastic? Um, <laughs> probably simply because like, unapologetic like, cheap stuff. Yeah, because I don't see Apple ever apologizing for this. Um, yeah, I really hate this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really hate this thing. Bluetooth headphones. Get some. Uh, uh, QC35. I, I'm going to have to think about switching to Bluetooth headphones. I, I the problem is I, I all right. So probably next time I buy headphones, I will switch to Bluetooth. But for right now, I have yeah. all this legacy equipment. I'm not going to just toss aside so I no longer have to use this stupid ten dollar dongle. I know, I know. It's 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 a dumb thing to have to go through. I agree. Yeah, I just, uh, and, and again. They still included the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the MacBook, new MacBook Pros. Yep. What is with this mixed message they're sending? I don't it know. Makes, it makes no sense. Ah. Uh, anyway, well, actually, that looks to be all the questions we had this week. Um, I will mention that we are off next week. We, I know we missed a couple weeks in there. That was not all planned. Uh, one week. Todd was in Irvine. Then last week, I, how many things came up every time we tried to schedule the show? Uh, a million, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so we did a show this week. Uh, there will be no show next week because I'm on vacation and I don't care about all of you enough to do a show while I'm vacation. Aww. I kid. I, I kid. I kid. <laughs> I kid. Uh, actually, there was one year where I was like, hey, anyone want to do a podcast? I'm bored today. <laughs> Uh, so we'll be off next week, but we'll be back the week after that. So for those of you in the U S I hope you all have a happy and safe Thanksgiving for those of you heading out to the stores for black Friday. Uh, as somebody said in the chat earlier, at least it's not as dangerous as it used to be. We haven't heard of injuries in a few years, but again, make sure you do your research, make sure that you know what you're getting. So, as always, we appreciate you joining us. You can find us on the iTunes store by searching for the Techno Buffalo Show. And we do appreciate if you rate and review us. That does help us out with the show. You can also find us on the Google Play Store. You can subscribe via RSS feed. You can find us on Pocket Cast, or you can find us on the Stitcher app, which means you can listen to us anytime, anywhere. Until next time, I'm Sean Ani. I'm the Director of Operations. I've been joined by Executive Editor Todd Hazelton. Bye, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Until next time, take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.